So today I'll be building my wife a gaming PC. You know, she is the foundation of the TechSource family. Because of her, I'm able to do what I love every single day. You know, she holds down the fort back at home so that I can bring you guys content. She has no idea I'm building this PC for her, so at the end of the video, I'm gonna surprise her with a brand new system, and I just hope she likes it. Now, since this is going to be a gaming and productivity system, I gotta throw in the best parts I have here at the office. So, you know, being the wife of TechSource certainly has its perks. We will be going with Intel's latest processor, the i9-12900K, which dominated against AMD's flagship 5950X, not just in gaming, but productivity as well. I'll try and toss up some benchmarks so you guys can see what I'm talking about. While the gaming performance is very impressive, I was mostly interested in the productivity performance because this PC will be used mostly for editing videos. You see, my wife actually has a YouTube channel where she vlogs about lifestyle, travel, and I think there's some cooking stuff on there as well. And she edits her videos, believe it or not. I taught her a few things, but now she edits it by herself. So we can definitely use all the cores we can get. She currently edits on a crappy laptop and it freezes, overheats a lot, and honestly just shuts down sometimes in the middle of an edit. So I wanna give her a nice upgrade where she can comfortably edit her videos without any problems. So the 12900K technically is a 16 core, 24 thread processor. 16 of the cores are split between eight physical and eight efficient cores. And then we have eight more for hyper threading, which is how they were able to get that number. It is a new socket type as well, which means I won't be able to use any of the older chipsets from Intel. Hence why we're going with the new ASUS Strix Z690 A Gaming that I unboxed in a few videos ago. Now, the reason why I'm sticking with DDR4 is for two reasons. Number one, I didn't see any huge performance differences from DDR5 in terms of gaming and productivity. And number two, there just isn't any white DDR5 kits available right now. So throwing a black one in this kit would completely ruin the white and pink color scheme. So that's why I'm sticking with the Z690 for now. This actually works out perfectly because I do in fact have white sticks to match the build perfectly. We're gonna toss in a 32 gigabyte kit from Thermaltake. The tough RAM sticks are my second favorite RAM sticks currently, and these are running at 3200 megahertz with a seal timing of 16. Speaking of the color scheme, I did mention it was white and pink. Pink is one of her favorite, actually is her favorite color. So instead of doing a generic all white build that you've seen a million times on YouTube, I thought I can introduce another color. I think this will look really nice with the build. The only thing I messed up on was when I was ordering the cables from Cable Mod, I freaking left the, uh, the cable combs black instead of changing that to white. So I don't know how that's gonna look. I mean, there are some black accents inside the case, so maybe, you know, I can pull it off, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, we'll be uh, replacing the stock cables from the RM850X from Corsair. Now for storage, I'm just gonna slap in an eight terabyte M.2 SSD from Sabrent, which will house her operating system and any other files that she uses for editing her videos. For the graphics card, we're going with an RTX 3090. There is no question about it. She is the wife of TechSource. So naturally, she has to have the best specs inside of her system, even though she's not gonna take advantage of the performance while editing videos. But you know, maybe in the future when she does start playing games, if she starts playing games, she can definitely take advantage of the performance. I just realized this system is gonna be way more powerful than my current system, Big Red 3.5. Sad times, but yeah, I mean, she's the best, so she deserves the best. Cooling CPU is the ASUS Strix LC360 AIO. Obviously, I have to get it in white to match the build, but this one doesn't support the new 1700 socket type, but ASUS was kind enough to send in the supported bracket separately. And finally, we'll be building inside the new Thermaltake Core P6. And the reason why I'm going with this case specifically is because it's wall mountable. Yeah, this case can transform from a regular ATX case with side panels into an open air frame that you can mount on the wall. I actually have big plans for this PC, you guys. Um, after I'm done building my ultimate dream setup, I'm gonna build her a setup right behind mine, and I'm gonna mount this PC on the top of her setup on the wall. And all the times that she's not using the setup, it's gonna be used as a guest setup. So if I have friends or family coming over, they can use the setup and play games with me. So I guess in the end, the 3090 will go to good use. But yeah, these are pretty much all the parts that I'll be using. Let's begin. All right, it's going to start the build. You know, it's been a while since I have done a PC build. I think it's been over a month actually, so I might be a little bit rusty. Well, back with the one-handed builds. How many of you guys missed that? <laughs> you know, sometimes I gotta put the camera down, otherwise it's impossible. What else do we have down here? We don't need any SATA cables because we're sticking to an M.2. And then the Wi-Fi antennas, I guess I can hold off on that till the end of the video. 
Let's bring out the 12900K. By the way, guys, if um, you're wondering what that other processor was that I unboxed in the last unboxing video, it was actually a 12900K as well. I did confirm it the other day, so. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So fun little fact, the CPU socket cover actually is, uh, is flipped upside down for the new 1700 socket. So it comes down from the top. Very useful information, I know, I know. That's why they call me tech source tech tips. And there's so much more tension with this lever. Look at that. You have to put a lot of force into this. All right, now for the memory. I swear, I can't get over how good these look. I've probably said this so many times in my videos, but this is like top five, one of the cleanest looking white sticks available, at least until DDR5 comes out, of course. Look at that, so beautiful. So the dim slots on uh, the new motherboards, the Z690 DDR5 motherboards are actually slightly different. The notch is actually moved a couple millimeters left or right, so you won't be able to use any of the older RAM sticks on the DDR5 motherboards. But since this is a DDR4 motherboard, we are using DDR4 memory, so this will look just fine. Oh my God, I, I swear, this chrome accent here really just completes the look. And look, it actually matches the motherboard too, because it's got a mirrored, um, mirrored accent over here too. All right guys, unfortunately I gave up on the one-handed PC build because my arm is seriously dying. That's what happens, I guess, when you stop working out for six months. Have you guys noticed I lost all the gains in my videos? I look so scrawny now. I don't know why some people are commenting saying that I look buff for some reason. Maybe it's because I'm wearing like a super tight shirt, but I promise you guys, I used to weigh like 185. Now I'm down to like 170. That's how bad it is. Oh, I forgot Asus is using these really cool locking levers instead of screws. Check this out. I just got to rotate this. And it locks the uh, M.2 drive in place. That is so cool. All right, so that part is done. I think I'm going to take this time and put it inside the case, but I also want to convert this into an open air case. I was actually reading the manual and there are so many interchangeable parts of this case. It's like a transformer. It's crazy how many parts you can remove and move around actually. This is one of the more complicated cases that I've worked with for sure. All right, we're not gonna need a tempered glass panel for sure. So we can take this out. We're also getting rid of our mounting points. So we're not gonna be able to mount anything in the front and the top since those are getting removed as well. You know what, technically you can still mount this case even with the front, top and side panels. I just realized, but I feel like it won't look as clean with the panels on. I love that open air form factor. Also because my PC is gonna be open air as well. So you know how we're gonna have kind of two setups facing each other. My PC is gonna be mounted right above mine and this one's gonna be mounted right above her. So for symmetry reasons as well, I guess, it's gonna look a lot better too, so. Oh, that screech though. <laughs> Sorry if I uh, hurt your ears, guys. All right, so those are off. I wonder how you're gonna take this off though. Honestly, at this point, I'm just removing stuff piece by piece and whatever falls apart, falls apart. That did absolutely nothing. I removed two screws from here and that did absolutely nothing. You know what, let's read the damn manual. A few minutes later. All right, so apparently I gotta remove the rear panel as well. I gotta take this off. All right, that should be all of it. I think, almost. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. The rear panel is off. Now that is looking a lot better already. Oh, 
Why are these drills always dying on me, man? That is unfortunate. Oh, look. There it goes off the top plate. One more side left, you guys. All right. We have almost stripped her down to her core. I think the only thing left to do is remove the base, but I think I'm just gonna keep that on there for now, just so there's a bit of stability while I'm doing the rest of the build. All right, you know what? Let's figure out the cooler situation before I put the motherboard inside the case. So I'll be going with the uh, stock fans and the radiator with the pump. All right, so this is the old bracket. We're gonna have to remove this. And then this is the one that they sent me. If you guys can, you can kind of see the difference. The only thing different are these notches over here. All right, we are making some pretty good progress so far. Oh yeah, that is looking super clean. So I'm not too concerned with airflow because obviously we are working with an open air case. Um, in terms of fan configuration, we're only gonna have three fans in here and that will be for the, um, the radiator. And I guess we can just go with the uh, push configuration. I don't really think thermals are gonna be an issue with this, but of course we'll check that out. Cause I'm really curious to see how the 12 nanometer K is gonna do with just a single 360 mil AIO. Oh, I love how they included cutouts over here on the side. Good stuff, thermal take. Oh, that's perfect. I think the tubes are too short for this, you guys. Uh, nope, I think, I think we can make it work. So I went in and tucked away some of the cables near the top left, and I'm going to basically channel this down the left side over here, trying to push back this cable so I can kind of hide it in the back as much as I can. There you go. So I'm gonna route this down. Check this out, this is very, very different compared to what I normally do. And then I'm gonna run this part of the cable back up through the VRM heat sinks. There's a tiny little cutout on the bottom here. Check this out, this is hilarious. And it comes out from the top. Look at that, oh my God. And then I'll run it through here on the left side of the EPS connectors and then through the back. Check that out. I'm not using any SSDs or hard drives, so we can remove these trays as well. There's one here on the top of the power supply shroud and then there's one more down here. So I'm gonna remove both of these. I'm not sure what this Velcro thing is doing here, but what is this even for? gonna remove it let's peel this off also all right and here we are so far I would say we're about halfway done with the build give or take uh, so the next thing we could do is probably the power supply and then work on the cable management slap in the GPU and we're pretty much done Wow that's actually this is actually a lot easier than I thought so 850 watts is more than enough to power this entire system. If I'm gonna do any heavy overclocking from the CPU, GPU, and maybe even the RAM, I would feel more comfortable with the 1000 watt power supply, but unfortunately nobody makes white power supplies in that wattage. I mean, technically I could have skinned a 1000 watt power supply, but I honestly don't think it's necessary. This is for my wife at the end of the day, so I don't think she'll be overclocking anytime soon. So yeah, we're gonna stick to this. 
The black cable combs on here are really bothering me, so I'm actually gonna place another order from Cable Mod with a white cable comb. So when those when those do arrive, I'm gonna swap these cables out. All right, last thing to do is install the Gravis card. Now, we are going with the Shrix 3090 white, and that card looks the best in vertical mode. You guys can fight me in the comment section, but I'm sorry, you're gonna lose the battle, okay? That card looks the best in vertical mode, so I have to mount it vertically. Luckily for the case, it does give me a vertical mount option. So, we do have a bracket on the bottom pre-installed for our riser cable. So we're gonna be going with the Aza RGB riser cable. This is the same one I used in the Frost build, if you guys remember. In addition to that, we can also flip the uh, rear PCI bracket to the side to compensate for the vertical mount. So kudos to Thermaltake for thinking that far ahead. It should be the bottom two screws and then these three screws that are holding this entire thing together. And then afterwards, we can just rotate it. All right, so PCI bracket comes off and you literally just rotate it and then you install it back on. That is so cool. All right, I've given up, so I'm gonna remove the power supply shroud and just make my life a lot easier. Why do I always torture myself with these things? Look at this, guys, honestly, I can't make this up. Like, who the hell thought it was a great idea to put the thumb screw upside down inside of the power supply shroud? Like, you can still see the screw from the top, so if it, if it was an aesthetics thing, it still doesn't make any sense. So typically when you guys are going with a vertically mounted GPU setup, you don't want the card sitting too close to the side panel. Otherwise, it's going to restrict the airflow through the fans and increase the temps of the GPU during full load. So I guess in this case, the card will be sitting a few centimeters in front of the side panel, um, but it's not gonna affect temps at all because it's pretty much surrounded by air. So we're gonna check temperatures, of course, once everything is hooked up. Just to confirm my theory, so I was thinking about using the front panel cable extension kit from Corsair. These are all in white, as you can see, which will look amazing in the build, but you know, most of the cables on the bottom, or all the cables on the bottom are not gonna be visible because the GPU is gonna be sitting in front of it. So what's the point in swapping those out? I could, however, at least use a USB 3 cable extension because that is the only one that's gonna be visible. Plus I can use the extra cable length as well. There you go, that definitely looks a lot better than using a black cable. All right, do you wanna put the side panel on real quick and then do our first boot just so we can see what it looks like all lit up with the lights and then I can take it home and surprise her. Also, when I'm ready to mount this, I'm gonna remove the uh, the bottom stand as well. But obviously I need it now so I can keep the PC upright. Damn, this thing is stuck on there. Pretty good. All right guys, here we go. Let's see how this, oh my God. The freaking AIO pump logo is upside down. Can I change that? Oh no, I guess, I think it's gonna be like that. That's unfortunate. On some other pumps, you can actually rotate the, uh, the cap. Anyways. Oh. Ah, damn. Damn, that looks so good. Oh, this RGB riser, man. 
even though you can see like a little bit of it from the top, it really does just, it's the icing on the cake in my opinion. Oh man, I gotta get a better angle from here. That is so damn clean, if I say so myself. I'm actually a little bit more jealous than I am excited. God damn, I could have take this home and surprise my wife with it, what? What? At least it's in the same household, right? I mean, damn, all I gotta say is I better be getting some tonight. So yeah, the only gripe I have is still with the cable combs, it's still bothering me that they're black, but I don't know, somehow it just, it doesn't stick out too much. Maybe I'm saying that to make myself feel better, but I don't know what you guys think. Give me your honest feedback about the cable combs. Should I go on Cable Mod and order a new set of cables and change them to white? Because there's no way I can swap them out, by the way. They're attached to the cable, so I have to replace the entire cable kit if I want to change the colors. Uh, if this was my build, hands down, 100%, those cable combs would be gone. Like, I'll order a new set of cables and I'll get it done. But it is my wife's PC, and honestly, I just, I don't think she cares enough about the cable combs. Maybe I'm just overthinking, like I always do. Aside from that, I just realized the AIO pump is upside down. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't even rotate the damn screen. Maybe I'll try and rotate it through the software if I can. Um, but other than that, the actual build inside the case was a little confusing at times. You know, there's some stuff in the manual that isn't listed, not even on their YouTube channel. So like the power supply installation, it was nowhere to be found in the manual. So I was confused for like two hours trying to figure out how the hell am I supposed to install the power supply going with the open air format. If you want to mount your PC on the wall, really the only choice is thermal take right now. There are very few cases out there in the market that do offer wall mount support. Usually the first thing that comes to your mind is thermal take core P6 cases if you want to mount. But aesthetics wise, I think it's an awesome looking case. Overall rating for the case, I would say a solid eight out of 10. Yeah, now it's time to take this home and surprise the wifey. All right guys, so I bought over the system to our new house and plugged it in. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up and call the wife over real quick. Hope this doesn't catch on fire. There we go. <laughs> this is such a janky setup. Alrighty. All right, she's over there setting up the Christmas tree. Babe, I got a surprise for you. Right? Yes. Come here, I'll show you. I know you've been um, editing your videos on a crappy laptop that's been crashing every single time, giving you a hard time, so I thought I would build you something. So go ahead and close your eyes. Actually, you don't have to, it's already covered. Come closer. <laughs> that's, <laughs> when I, that's yours, yeah. When I count down to one, lift it up and then look at your surprise. I'm pretty sure you already know what it is based off of you know, the size. So here we go, three, two, one. You like the colors? <laughs> I love it. I like pink. You like pink? I knew you like pink. Oh. You love it? I love it. You can now edit your videos on. Oh. Can you like it? Mm. You're welcome. That's so beautiful. It's almost as beautiful as you. Yeah, it's got some beefy specs. Obviously, you, don't, you probably don't even know what's inside, but I got a 12900K processor, RTX 3090 in white. This is actually faster than my PC. Oh, really? It is, yeah, it's faster than my PC that I'm using currently, but you know, it's, that's gonna change real soon, obviously, but. I left the colors on RGB for now, but you can change it. I'm gonna change it for you to white, so then it's gonna be only white and pink. Mm -hmm. So it looks really nice. Because obviously the theme I was going for was uh, was white and pink, so. So do you think I'm getting some tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mission successful, you guys. She loves the PC and looks like I'm getting some tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll drop a link to all the parts I use down below if you guys want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.